Welcome back to my RISC-V Learning the ISA series. We're going to implement hardware today to add load instructions to the data path. Let's, let's look at um, the anatomy of some load instructions and maybe the uh, problem will become a little clearer. So if we talk about, let's say, a load byte and we want to put the loaded byte, say, into register X2 and we want to, um, say, load the I don't know, say the second byte from the address that's sitting in register X3, what's this actually going to do? Well, it, it's going to take whatever memory address is in X3, it's going to add two bytes to it, and then that's going to be presumably the byte you want to load out of memory and stick into X2. Uh, so a couple of things about that loaded byte. The value that you pull out of memory needs to be sign extended. Uh, there is, of course, a version of the load byte instruction load byte unsigned uh, that if you did something like this that the byte that would go into x2 in this case would would not be sign extended because you're saying load byte unsigned so there there are two base there are two versions of this uh, one loading sign extended bytes and one loading unsigned bytes so the second thing to notice here is that uh, or the memory from the instructions are, are byte addressed memory. Um, and what does that, that actually mean? Well, what it means is you're getting the, the, the result from these two operations here, taking the address that's in this register and adding this offset to it, means that you're getting the exact byte and memory that you are trying to, to access. However, what if we have a memory component? Let's, let's actually add a memory component to our design and take a look at this for a moment. So here's a RAM module. I'm going to make it a little simpler because we don't need all the complexity here. Uh, so we're dealing with a 32-bit CPU. There's a couple of ways we could go about doing this. Uh, one way is to make our data bit width 8 bytes. So every single byte here would be directly addressable. And that might seem like that would be consistent with these instructions being byte addressable. However, if you think about it, if you wanted to load an entire word, a four byte word from memory, that would actually take four clock cycles because you would need to set the address to the first to the first byte and then you would need to load it in and then you'd need to set the address to the second byte and load it in and then concatenate those bytes together to return an entire word. So what's typically done here is instead of having your uh, data bytes, your, your, your data bit width being eight, of course, since you've got a 32-bit CPU, your data bit width would be 32. That makes a lot more sense now. You're gonna give an address and you're gonna get back a 32-bit word. But what happens when you just want one byte from that word? That makes things a little bit more complicated, right? So what I'm proposing is that um, we build some circuitry that deals with the nuances of loading bytes, either uh, sign extended or not. And we also have uh, half words. So there is an LH instruction. Uh, you know, it would be sort of the same idea here. Um, you want the uh, either the first half word from the register, from the address in register three, or you want the second, right, half word from the address sitting in register three. And then of course you have the um, unsigned version of this load as well. So let's build a circuit that essentially conditions the loading of a full word into a either a signed byte or an unsigned byte. So let's build a circuit called load byte. So in this circuit, we want to select an address from which we uh, want to load a value from memory. So let's call that AT. And we want to 
accept the loaded word that uh, we loaded in from RAM at that address. So we'll call this load word. Now these normally, these should be pins because this is gonna be a sub-circuit, but um, what I wanna do for development purposes is to go ahead and put some constants in here because that's gonna enable us to simulate this as we go. It's gonna be, the circuit's gonna be fairly long, so I think it's gonna be easier to uh, make these constants so we can kind of simulate it as we're developing it. So let's, for argument's sake, let's say that we're trying to load the byte at address I don't know, say six. And let's say that um, value that we got back from memory is, uh, uh, I don't know, so one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Okay, and so on the output, uh, we want to output either the result of a load byte instruction or a load byte unsigned instruction. So let's go ahead and stick some pins out here. So when we ask for the byte at memory location six, understand that the word that we got out here was actually the second word in memory because the first word would be asked for at location zero. The second word would be accessed at location four because we are word aligned, 32 bits per word. So this was the second word that was fetched out of memory. And since we're asking for byte six, uh, this first byte would be uh, the zeroth byte. This would be the first byte. And then this, of course, is the second byte. So what we should see out of here, if we implement this correctly, is we should see 33, right? Okay, so how do we get the index from this absolute address? Well, the first the, the way we can go about doing that is with an AND gate. So let me let me do this. So now we have a two, which is going to be the index into this uh, word. Now what we need to do is we need to shift this this uh, byte at index two, we need to shift it over, right? Because we're ultimately wanting 33 as the only byte in the, in the entire word. So if we subtract the position that we're at by three, we can get the number of bytes that we need to move, right? So let's do that. So again, I'm going to continue to put these pins out here so that we can see as we go what our result is. So this should be a one now, right? So we wanna move, or basically we wanna shift this one byte over, uh, but we can only shift by bits, so we need the number of bits. So if we multiply this number by eight, then we can get the number of bits we need to shift. Um, but instead of using a multiplier, I'm simply going to use a bit shifter. If we, sh if we bit shift this number over, by three places, Now we should have eight uh, bits to shift here. So again, I'm going to stick this up here to show the result. Right, so now we wanna shift 
this number eight bits that direction to the right. So let's do that. And here we have a problem because we've got 32 bits coming out of this bit shifter, but the input to this shifter requires only five bits, right? So um, we need to just select the lower five bits from this in order to make this one work. So let's do that. Use a bit selector for that. So our bit selector needs to be 32 data bits with an output of only five. And we want to select the first group, which is the zeroth indexed group. So let's put a constant out here. Now we should be able to shift the requisite number over. And again, and it's shifting the wrong direction. That's why these putting these intermediate steps out here is very useful, logical right. And there we go. So now our 33 is in the right spot, but you'll notice we got junk in here that we don't want. We need this mask off. So let's and let's just mask it off um, without doing any sign extension, which would actually yield the correct value here. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, we can do that with an AND gate. And what we need is a constant to mask that off with. The constant needs to be FF. Thus yielding our output. Yes, 33. Okay, so now how do we sign extend this? We need to get the eight bits, and then we need to sign extend that result. So let's use a selector again. We're gonna start with 32 bits, and we're gonna output eight bits. And then we need a sign extender, bit extender. Here we go. All right, so we, got, we have an 8-bit byte. We want to extend it to 32 bits. And then our result should be this instruction. And indeed, uh, the number is the same because, of course, this number is not a negative number uh, if you were to uh, have it as a signed byte. However, if we say, for example, uh, let's put, well, let's put 80 in here. Boom, there we go. That is, uh, that is the correct uh, sign extended number for uh, 80 the byte 80 and uh, just to be sure like so let's put um, let's put say 7f Yes, that is correct. It rolls over when you get to 80. Let's let's do a few more tests. Let's pick an address of say I don't know nine if, if and so using an address of Nine that basically means you want the first index um, Into the number because if you picked eight that would be the zeroth index so that nine will be the first index 
which basically means you want 2, 2. And indeed, we, we get the, the, the 2, 2 here. Uh, and just to be sure, you know, let's pick 8. That should show 1, 1, and it, and it does. Okay, so our indexing logic seems to be working correctly. So I'm going to clean all of this up. Because I think our circuit, we proved our circuit's working correctly. And then, um, again, this shouldn't be hard-coded. This should just be pins. So let me go ahead and put the pins back in. Okay, so let's implement the something similar, but let's do it for um, load half words. The idea is essentially the same, though. All right, load word circuit. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. It's the same idea, um, but let's. Um, I'm going to steal some of this just to kind of speed this up a little bit. So instead of load byte, this will be load half word. Okay, and we want to just use constants again because uh, we want to see this as we build it. So I'm going to put these constants back in this example. And let's say we want to load from the sixth byte in memory. And um, let's say our the value that we loaded from memory again is one one two two three three. Oh. And we need the number of bytes first, and then we want, let's say, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. As before. Right. So in order to get either so recognize that we have again a four byte word, and we're either trying to get the zeroth index for these first 16 bits or the first index of these um last 16 bits. So a simple way to do that is to just look at the twos place on the address. And if the twos place is a zero, well, we know that we want this uh, zeroth index. And if the twos place is a one, well, then we know that we want we want this group right here. So we can do it, use a bit selector to get the bit of the twos place. So this bit selector, the input is going to be 32. The output bits is one because we just want one bit. We want the twos, the twos place bit. So to get the twos place bit, we want the first. It's, it's zero index going from right to left. So that means we want the first index. So let's see here. And then this output should be a zero or a one, whether we have the twos bit or not. And then to feed into that, we either want this, this a zeroth group or this first group index. So let's use a bit selector for that. So we have our data input coming from memory here, which is going to be 32 bits, and we want to select out 16 bits, right? So it's going to be the first half or the second half. So our input is going to be input from memory here. And let's go ahead and put some pins here so we can look at what this is. Oh, 
oh, and of course this needs to be 16 bits, not 32 bits. And this needs to be an output, which is why that's red. Okay. All right, does this make sense? Uh, so we selected um, the sixth byte. Uh, no, the fourth byte should have yielded 1122. The sixth byte should have yielded 33440. That is because our selector goes from right to left. So we need here instead a uh, inverter. Ah, there we go. So the sixth byte yields 3344, which is correct. The, if we change this to the fourth byte, that should yield 1122. Okay, so that seems to be working fine. So it's the case that if we extine, sign extend this number, we get our load high signed instruction. So let's do that. So input width is 16 and our output width needs to be 32 and we're gonna sign extend. So if we do this and this, right, we get one, one, two, two. Uh, then if we basically do the same thing However, we won't, this extension type won't be signed, it'll just be zero. And we get 1122, which of course 1122 is a, a positive number in both cases. So um, let's go ahead though, and let's change this value to say 8122. Right, so the signed version is sign extended because 8122 is a negative number. Um, the unsigned version of course is not. So this, uh, this seems to be making sense. So this, this circuit's a lot, a lot simpler. Now, one of the things that is not obvious maybe here is that what happens if you do what's called a misaligned load? So let's say you load, um, say bit or byte five. Well, you know, nothing's gonna happen here. It's going to basically assume that you meant four. Technically it should load two, two, three, three, I suppose. Now the RISC-V specification talks about what happens when you do misaligned loads and Either it should generate a fault or it should, you know, basically do the, do the correct read and give you the, back the right result. I don't really care about that and I'm not going to really focus on issue, doing either one of those things um, at this point. It doesn't really matter. This is kind of a learning exercise. Maybe later I will put some fault. You know, you, you can do some things to throw a fault flag. Uh, it's not really important for the purpose of, of this learning exercise, but just recognize that for loading half words, you can certainly do a, a, a misaligned load. Also for loading words, you know, you could specify um, a byte address that's not uh, on a word boundary. And, you know, in theory, that should generate a fault as well. Let's clean this up now. We don't need this anymore. And we need to put these back as pins. And I think we're in a position to build our load control circuit. So let's do that. So let's talk inputs and outputs. So given an address of where we wanted to load memory from, and given a loaded word from memory,
And given a what I'm going to call a load selector, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and given a right back selector, and again, I will talk about what that means in a minute. We then want to know what data we eventually want to load back into the register file. So let's create a uh, label just called, uh, how about DT? And let me set these up with the right number of bits. So let's talk about the load selector. This is from page uh, 148 of the uh, RISC-V Unprivileged ISA document. Again, I'll have it in the description. Anyway, it's interesting that this is buried on page 130, so I did all the research for you. Um, but as you can see, the load instructions here, load byte, load half word, etc. Func3 defines the selector that indicates which one of these instructions that you have. So that's why um, I'm gonna make load selector a three bit value. Now, right back selector, uh, whenever we're trying to load data back into the register file as the result of, of the instruction, we're either gonna be writing the result from the ALU, or we're gonna be writing the result from that we loaded from memory. So this will just be a single bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in constants again here, because again, I think it's just easier to test this out. So let's start out with the two components that we created. We've got a load byte component and a load word component. And uh, I noticed that we have no labels. Let's fix that, that's annoying. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, that's better. Okay, so let's connect up our obvious tunnels. And the way that we are gonna route these results, ultimately these results need to get routed to this output value, we're gonna use a multiplexer. Now this multiplexer, it will need three select bits because it's gonna follow the value of the selector. And in fact, let's go ahead and put the selector, uh, attach the selector to the multiplexer, like so. And I guess I'll go ahead and put tunnels on these two. So load byte then is selector zero. And then uh, load half is selector one. And then selector two is is load word. That's the that's the entire thing that was loaded. So that's actually this value here. So there is no selector three, so we'll ignore that. So selector four is uh, load byte unsigned. This is four, yes it is. And then uh, selector five is load half word unsigned.
And this is getting a little crowded. Let me move it over. That's better. Okay, and finally for the output, uh, let's add a multiplexer. And the reason that we need this multiplexer is because we either want the result of this conversion, which is you know, conditioning the data that we're getting out of main memory, or we want to load the result from the ALU back into the register file. So let's put connect this selector to the select pin. And if the selector is zero, that means we want to write back the result of this conditioned data. So that is here. And that needs to be 32 bits. Otherwise, we want to write the result that we got from the ALU. And that actually happens to be this, what we're calling the address. But remember, the ALU is either computing the uh, address of memory that we're trying to get, or it's just the result of some operation from the ALU that get, it needs to get written back to the register file in the first place. Okay, let's test this. Let's test the load byte. So the load, the selector for load byte is going to be all zeros. And let's just say we want to load um, something simple like byte three. And we'll use our one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four example. So byte three, so this should be byte zero, byte one, byte two, byte three. So we should expect to see a, a four, four over here. Uh, and that of course is if our write back selector is zero because we're trying to write back from this circuit right here. So this needs to be a zero. So yes, indeed, we do see a four, four uh, as uh, a result of load byte at byte three of this value right here. So, so far so good. And in fact, the write back selector seem to be correct as well. So when we go write back select one, that means pass the result from the ALU to the output. And this is of course the result from the ALU. So that seems to be working as well. Uh, let's try another instruction. So let's try a load, um, load half word. So that's going to be, uh, selector one. And again, we don't uh, we don't want to do a misaligned load. So let's just load at the second byte. So that should be three, three, four, four, assuming we have the right back selector selected correctly. Yes, three, three, four, four. So that's making sense. And of course, if we change this to a zero, we should get one, one, two, two, and and we do. Let's try an let's try a signed load, but let's make this a negative number. So let's make uh, one, one, two, two. Again, let's make this an eight, and we get a sign extended result. So that. That's working. Now let's change this to um, load half word unsigned, which would be this value right here, 101, the selector 101. Uh, let's see, 101 would be uh, four, that would be the number five, right? And right, and so that makes sense. 8122 would be would yield 8122 because that is the unsigned version of that number. So I would say this circuit is working. So we now should be able to integrate it into uh, our main data path. Uh, but before we do, let's go ahead and clean this up. Put our pins in here. So let's integrate this into our data path. Okay, so let's add our load control. 
The uh, A input, that's actually the result from the ALU. So I'm gonna rename this. Uh, I think I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna rename this to maybe um, ALU A for address. Now the loaded word, that's the word that we actually loaded from memory. So that's gonna be this uh, resulting D value from RAM. So uh, let's put a tunnel. I guess I'm just gonna call this load word tunnel. Now our load selector, that actually needs to come from control logic. And guess what? We don't have that set up for control logic yet. We'll need to do that. Same thing for write back selector. That's a control logic item, uh, not set up yet. We'll come back to it. The output then uh, of the load control, that's the, that's the value that needs to get routed back into the register file, particularly um, this register data right here, which is basically data D. Now for our RAM, what needs to get hooked up to RAM? Well, uh, the address to select the RAM from, that is this ALU address. Now there's one little caveat to that. Let me move this over. Remember I talked about uh, byte alignment, byte aligned or a, a byte addressing from these, um, from these instructions. Well, our RAM is not byte addressed, it's word addressed, so therefore, we need to make an adjustment to the address coming out of the ALU to make sure that the RAM that we fetch or the, the word value from the RAM that we fetch is word aligned, not byte aligned. So how can we do that? We essentially need to divide by four. So an uh, easy way to divide by four is to simply do a bit shift on the address. We don't have a full address space of RAM defined here. We just have a little bit of RAM. So we, uh, we're we just gonna select the first few bits off of our address in order to be able to feed that into our RAM. Now dividing by four, we wanna shift this over to uh, two bit places. So we just need a constant. So let's see if I have that right. I'm not exactly sure about this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that off and I'm going to just jam in a constant here and see if we can get the selector to move the way we expect it to move. And so I would expect the selector here to be um, zero, which is picking up the first, um, the first word. So let's make the value four. And that's wrong, I would expect Oh, is this shifting the wrong way? I bet this is shifting the wrong way. Ah, yeah, that is correct. 
So yeah, so uh, byte address of four should yield uh, RAM index of one. And so a byte index of eight should yield the next one and so forth. Okay, so yes, this now seems like uh, this logic is working. So let me put this back. Okay, a couple more odds and ends. Uh, we need a clock on our RAM. So uh, let's go ahead and create a tunnel for the clock. Now the other two data values of node on the RAM are the write enable and the data input to write into RAM. Of course, those are for storing data and those would, would of course be the store instructions, which we're not addressing in this video. So I'm just gonna leave these un unconnected uh, for now because they're really not needed. I think it's time to work on the truth table. So again, this truth table is in the description, uh, the link to it. So um, what we need to do is we need to add the selector for the load control, and we need to load the uh, right back selector, uh, insert column to left. So let's see, we need four of them in total. And so um, I think I will um, put the L cell first. It really doesn't matter which order I put them in. So that would be um, L cell two. And then let's add our instructions. You'll notice that I have the instructions down here on the bottom. Here we go. Okay, so we want to add load byte load half word, load word, load byte unsigned, and load half byte unsigned. Let's fill in our truth table. So we know that the write back selector now needs to be a one. You know, this didn't exist, but when we're dealing with these register to register instructions, the write back selector needs to be a one because we want the result from the ALU to be written back to the register file. So the way that we set that up in our load control was that that needed to be a one. Again, to refresh memory, um, load control. If the value of this mux from the write back selector is a one, that means take the value from the ALU and pass it through. Otherwise, for these new instructions that we just created, the write back selector needs to be zero because we want the value from memory to be written. So that takes care of that. Now, the question is, what do these load selectors need to be for these register to register instructions? Well, it doesn't really matter because we're not dealing with value from memory. So we can just fill, we can just fill these in with zeros. Okay, so now let's work on the new load instructions. Let's start with let's start with the easy ones. Um, let's deal with the opcode. So the opcode for our instructions are actually all zeros. We ignore the last two bits here. So the opcode starting at I six, because you see opcode is at is at from six to zero with the last two bits being ignored. So our opcode is actually all zeros for these zero 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 and then those are solve the same opcode for these load instructions and then what does our funct three need to be well that is the purpose of the selector that we had talked about so um, for load byte the selector needs to be zero For load half word, the selector is one. For load word, the selector is two, so that would be zero, one, zero. For load byte unsigned, the selector needs to be four, so that would be one, oh, oh. 
again, we're all we're in binary here. So a selector of five would be one, zero, one. And what does I30 need to be? Well, in this case, I30 needs to be all zeros. So because that's on the func seven, you know, again, if we're looking at the I type record, it's it's over here, but it's it's all going to be zero. Now, since we mapped the output one to one to the input from the func three selectors perspective, we can just repeat those same codes. So this should be zero zero zero. Not quite as obvious here. What does the what did the ALU selector outputs need to be? Well, if you think about the instruction, the load instruction, the value coming in on a, on a, an input register is the location and memory that you're trying to fetch, plus you are adding an offset to that. So we actually need the ALU to perform an arithmetic add operation in order to be able to do that. And an arithmetic add, if you look up here, is all zeros, right? So AS3 through AS0 need to be all zeros for all of these load instructions because we need the ALU to do an add. Now we need for the register write enable, we want to write the result that we got from memory back to the register file. So that is a logic one for this flag. That's what causes that to happen. Okay, so what does our what do our immediate selectors need to be? And what does the B selector input for the data for the uh, ALU need to be on the ALU control? Um, so the load instructions are all of a format of I, right? So our I select, our immediate uh, format record is the I record, which is basically what all of these are, uh, in particular on, you know, on, on our immediate instructions, right? They're all zeros. So the same applies here because our load instructions are also of an I type. What does the B selector need to be? Well, the B selector needs to be, uh, the, the B input on the ALU needs to be the immediate value we retrieved from the uh, instruction itself. So that means that this needs to be a value of one. All right, finally then, we need to add all of, make sure all of these bits form our output binary value here. Okay, so why is Google giving me this function bin to hex parameter one too long? It's 13 characters and maximum length is 10. Well, that sucks. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, well, I'm just gonna blast this column and I guess uh, I will deal with it in my Python script. And yeah, I'll get rid of this one too, just because it will probably be a problem here as well. Delete column. And yeah, I want this border here to be like that. Fine. And then I um, need to extend this down. Okay, so I believe this truth table now should support all of these instructions. So let me save it now to my Python directory. I will need to update the uh, Python script a little bit to deal with the fact that uh, we can't get the hex values out of here. Okay, so this is now our new truth table. And yeah, just obin and ibin are in here and the hex columns are gone, which is fine. So what we need to do is convert uh, ibin, obin and ibin to uh, an index, uh, basically an integer index. Okay, it's easier than I thought. So that is basically uh, intro i bin 
and we're doing base 2 instead of base 16. So that's pretty simple. So this should be obin base 2. And hopefully Python won't have the 10 digit limit, which of course I don't think it does. So now, um, given that we have um, 13 bits of data that we're, that we're uh, reading from the control logic ROM, we are going to need, not quite two bytes, but two, two bytes of data. So that means we're going to need four hexadecimal digits on the output. So let's execute this. Build ROM taking the truth table as input and outputting uh, the control ROM. And again, this is a uh, link to this is in my GitHub repository. It's in the description. Now, does this look reasonable? Well, I don't know if it's right, but it looks reasonable. So let's modify the control ROM in the project and load this file into the control ROM. Right, so our ROM now is going to be 13 bits. And this added, this uh, splitter added this to the end, the upper, uh, the upper bits, which makes sense because um, that's again that should be yeah that should be these bits. So the right bat select is the ninth bit, which is right. So let me go ahead and put these tunnels in here. Okay, so let's add the output. Okay, I think that looks correct. So now let's go back to our data path and we should see these new signals here, exactly. So now all we have to do is hook the signals up. Okay, I think that is now finally integrated into data path and I apologize for the length of this video. This, is, this took a lot longer than I expected, but I didn't really want to break it up. I try to keep these to about 30 minutes, but don't think I'm going to make it this time. So let's check the load byte. Let's actually do, let's do this instruction right here. So let me go to our online assembler. So we're going to do load byte x2, 2x3. So load byte x2, 2x3. So that's going to be 218103. Okay, so let's put that in uh, for our instruction. Now we need to fill in some values here. Um, so let's let's put in four for x3. So address of four for X3. So this is gonna net an address of six. So in order to get an address of, in order to get the byte at address six, we need to put in a value for our RAM. So let's do that. So again, let's use one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. So a six, the, the value of six, that should be, Three three, so we so we should see a value of three three being written to register two in the register file when we tick the clock. Cross your fingers. Let's go look in the register file. And do we see see a value of one one? And it doesn't look like write enable ever went high. So it doesn't look like the value of two got added to our 
value of three in the register file because we picked up the byte of one one as opposed to the, the, the value of three three. If you look at what's coming in on our um, register data input, we've got a, a one one in here, but it didn't get loaded into the second register because probably the write enable didn't go high for some reason. So we don't exactly have, oh, <laughs> yeah, we don't have our control logic correct. And you know why? Because I didn't load the ROM after I went through the process of updating it. Okay. All right, let's go back. All right, so I see a value of six here, which makes sense because that's the address. That's we have we've got four in X3 and we're adding two to it, so that's a six. So maybe cross our fingers. Uh, let's tick the clock. Because in theory now we should see three three be written into register X2 in the register file. Tick the clock. And indeed we do. So write enable went high. Input register data is 33, and we got 33 written to register X2. So this load instruction now has been implemented in our data path. I could test other load instructions, and I probably will later on, but I think this video is long enough. Um, congratulations if you stayed with me through it. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.